What's up guys? It is JZNES back again with another video here today. We are here to talk about Fatal Frame uh, for that Halloween spirit on, you know, uh, November 11th. <laughs> That's fine. Um, for you guys it'll be November 12th. So, yeah. I got my black cat here to <laughs> fill in the Halloween vibes. Um, she's a nice girl for the most part. Um, anyway. Yeah, so we're talking about Fatal Frame. Obviously, I don't have Fatal Frame. Actually, what's funny is uh, my brother's girlfriend's brother, little brother, lent me this game a long, long fucking time ago. Like in, I don't know, the 2000s. Like early 2000s or whatever. Probably around when it came out, honestly. And uh, I didn't play it. I think I was just too scared to play it. I was into horror games at the time. Uh, but I never played it, and then I eventually had to give it back to him, like, forever later. It was, it was something I kept pushing off playing. And it kind of became this legacy thing for me, like, I'd always heard how scary, like, Fatal Frame was and stuff, and this whole series, and how good it was, and horror and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll get to that one day. So then, uh, you know, it's Halloween, so I'm like, alright, I gotta get to that. So, here we are. I got to it. Uh, and it was good. I, I really uh, enjoyed it. Spoilers, I guess, for Fatal Frame. <laughs> um, there's not much to spoil. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Fatal Frame. I, things I like off the bat, let's go with this. Um, the atmosphere is, like, top-notch, you know? Like, the the sound design, especially, like, you know, it just, it just really captures the vibe of this, like... Um, like Resident Evil ass mansion, but like even more, uh, think think Resident Evil's mansion layout, but like instead of modern, it's more like Japan, um, and it's more, you know, um, old school and and like more an earlier time. It's not as as modern as that. So it's like this mansion. Apparently, the main character lived there or something at one point. I, I don't know. I couldn't keep up with the story, really. It, it was about this girl who had been tortured, and you kind of follow her throughout the game, and she'll, like, point you, you know, like, someone's coming. Yeah, someone's coming. We we like people. I, we don't care if someone's coming. We, we, that, that'd be a good thing. No, uh, anyway, you don't know what that is. That's, uh, yeah, you'll look that up. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, she'll just kind of point you, and there's ghosts everywhere and shit, and it's, like, this really haunted sort of mansion but anyway her brother like goes in here to take a bunch of pictures and stuff and like try to figure out what the fuck is going on um and he gets lost and he never comes back kind of thing and so uh later on his little sister uh goes in there and she's this like cute japanese schoolgirl looking person but she's way braver than i would i would ever be if i would walk into that mansion i would have seen this shit happening i would have been like nope i'm out of here uh, so, yeah. You know, she, you kind of have, like, that scared girl vibe, but she's, she continues forward, even after everything she sees. Uh, so, pretty dedicated little sister, uh, right there. So, yeah. Uh, like, for sure. Little sister of the year there. Anyway, so, yeah, so the whole gameplay thing is, like, there's these ghosts, you have to take pictures of them. The more accurate uh, you get to the circle on the screen, um, which is usually like their head or something, um, the more damage you do, essentially. And and you have different types of camera film. You have your... Uh, I don't remember all the numbers, but there's like a 20-something a one that's like the weakest one. There's a 37, which is like the next highest one. Then there's like a... 60 something or 50 I think it's just 60 type 60 something or something like that which is like a pretty premium one that you don't really see and then you get at the very end of the game you get a 91 which is like it just obliterates the final boss like every other boss in this game is actually pretty challenging for the most part uh, that final boss is just a pushover because of that I suppose um, and the guide made it sound like it was gonna be like super hard or something but it really wasn't She's very slow, and it's really the fast enemies in this game that are the problem. We'll get to that here in a second. Um, as you can hear, though, the soundtrack, quote-unquote, is, like, mostly just, like, ambience and, like, 
noises of the ghosts and stuff, and they'll like whisper things at you, and, and those things can become annoying when, when you have to redo these parts several times over. But you know, um, but yeah, things I liked. So like the atmosphere was definitely like top notch. It was it was dark, but you could still see what you were doing. Uh, the puzzle aspect to it is it's very Resident Evil esque, where you'll pick up an item. And then you get get to use that in another room, or you like will take a picture of a ghost that will unlock a door in another room or something. They have these little tags on the thing, like the ones you use to keep away ghosts or whatever. And it'll show you a picture of like where the ghost is that you need to go and take out uh, in order to advance through that room. So, and and they've got a, a map and stuff, so it's very um, yeah. And when, once you kind of get the feel for the mansion, um, definitely you know your layout it's not always clear where to go but i think there's like there's files and stuff so a lot of that should kind of fill in some gaps and whatnot and if you're like really paying attention you'll understand like all the clues and stuff but a lot of times i was just left thinking like where do i go you know so i just would refer to the guide you know kind of thing uh which isn't necessarily a problem it's just uh that's this kind of game, you know, where it's like... But, but you only have such a limited area to look through, so backtracking isn't really that hard to do. Um, the only bad part about that is sometimes ghosts will stop you, and then you're using some of your limited resources, much like in a Resident Evil game, uh, but even more so limited um, in terms of healing items and, uh, and your ammo and whatnot. The only ammo that you can refill... Uh, unlimitedly is the first set of ammo like the blue ammo um and you can refill that at any camera there's cameras all around the game that are your save points and uh also checkpoints because if you die you go back to your last save spot so in a game where you're not using save states uh you're pretty screwed because you're gonna have to do a lot of backtracking and a lot of puzzles again and that kind of thing and it gets really annoying to do that kind of stuff but with save states like i've used the game becomes a lot better because it circumvents that and uh you don't really have to worry about all that like um backtracking whatnot which gets really annoying and games these days don't do that kind of stuff so it's just modernizing the game a little bit and there is a remake of this game i, I believe anyway it's called uh project zero or whatever i don't know if that ever came out here or what but um i'm a very new person to this uh this series here so um in that regard, you know, I'm just giving my opinions on the first one. I don't know about the remake or if that's better or anything. So, yeah, the camera stuff, that's all really cool. I, I don't mind that. The thing that I mind about all of that, you know, um, like the atmosphere, like I said, was really fantastic. And, and all the noises and sometimes they'll give you ghosts where you don't expect them. Like I was, the, the one that got me the most was I was in a save room that had been pretty it had never there had been one ghost in there that was not like a ghost that can hurt you there's ghosts that can hurt you and ghosts that like won't hurt you they're just kind of stuck there and you have to like take a picture and then it'll unlock i think um so there's only ever one of those passive ghosts in there but there was an aggressive ghost when i went back in there later which was apparently even an optional ghost to fight so um the odds of that happening were like you know yeah so I went in there, and I, I, this is like my hub save point for the entire game. I went in there to save and grab some ammo, and this ghost just ambushes me. And it's actually one of the more challenging ghosts in the entire game, because it actually disappears, and you have to just kind of see like this, like, uh, mist, or this kind of cloudy, like, um, whatever you want to call it. It's like aura kind of thing, and, and it's not very easy to spot sometimes and especially when these, that ghost is fast too so like that, that had to be one of the harder ghosts but it was one of the cool one of the better like cooler ghosts because of the the uh the gimmick there you know which not all of the other ones do they they all have their own little thing the only thing i hate about those kind of ghosts and little ghosts later in the game is they have all of these little projectile things now so we'll talk about this now uh big negative of the game is, is the dodging system. Now, there, there is some kind of dodging system in place there. Um, you can get these critical hits. There, there's there's a blue ring, and then there's an orange ring. If the blue ring is up around the ghost, that means you'll get some kind of hit in. Now, if the orange ring is up, that means the ghost is really close to you, and you have to make a snap second decision, 
or, or you know, you, you really, if you don't press that button, they're going to get you, basically. Um, and, and sometimes they still get you anyway. It kind of feels random and cheap sometimes, which is basically the entire biggest problem of the game is that system. If they refined that a little bit, like they probably did in the remake, this would be, like, nearly a perfect game outside of some of, like, the difficulty on the bosses and stuff. But if the dodging was improved, which the dodging sucks in this game, if it wasn't random, it didn't feel random, um, that would be a really interesting system because the way it works is the orange ring means that they're close. So if you take a picture, boom, if you successfully take a picture and they don't disappear or something, uh, boom, it knocks them back and it does a bunch of damage and you're really good. It's actually how, the only way you can damage the final boss is to take a picture while it's in orange. But the, the, the ring on the final boss is like huge and she moves so slow and stuff. It, it, it's, it's super easy fucking easiest fight in the whole game like seriously like not hard at all uh, apparently if she hits you though you get a one-hit ko so that's kind of shitty but uh for you anyway that's a good mechanic it's the final boss of course they should do a one-hit ko um it would have sucked for anybody playing this back in the day and then they'd have to go through all the stuff again from the last camera which is like i don't even remember where that was at it's forever ago so anyway yeah, actually, that would suck, because you'd have to go through all of the ghosts before that, unless you went back and saved, and then... that, that That's its own problem, but, you know, that could be circumvented with safe states, like I said. Uh, so anyway, and they do give you a lot of stuff leading up there to use, but apparently she's also immune to your... You have these um, upgrades that you can get for your, your camera, uh, certain powers and whatnot, so there's, like, one that paralyzes the ghost. It's really expensive. Um... You get souls every time you kind of uh, kill these ghosts or whatever, or take pictures of them or whatnot. Um, and depending on if you get better shots or worse shots, you get less or more, that kind of thing. So there's like a currency upgrade system in the game, which is cool. It's just uh, kind of a thing where you don't really get enough to upgrade a lot, so you really have to be choosy about it. And, and something I would say is to upgrade something get get instead of the basic performance stuff get one of the special moves as soon as you can maybe just save up for the paralyzing one because i hear that's really good but it's like twenty thousand, which i never had in the entire game um i got the the one that i got was the pushback one and then i got a different one that i never used um because it was like near the end of the game but the pushback one is really helpful too it, basically um you'll hit l1 and it'll push the ghost back as long as you got a shot on him and then you can get some like really critical shots on them and it's really good and i like that one so would recommend it's actually only like 12 or 14 thousand which is like less it's, it's achievable if you do that early in the game then you start upgrading the basic stuff on your camera like the speed and the charging up your uh special thing and that kind of stuff um you'll be good to go i think so definitely invest in that right away so that's that's something that i kind of had to just learn through trial and error and also, I mean, like, the game is only, like, six to seven hours long. I would say, like, about seven hours. My in-game counter when I finished it was, like, eight hours, but I took, like, an hour break there to uh, to watch some stuff and eat some food today and stuff, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so it's, like, a seven-hour kind of game, and um, so that's cool. You know, pretty short, but it, but uh, there's, like, five different nights or whatever kind of thing. Um... But yeah, like, so, the main problem with the game, though, like I said, was the dodging system. Now, uh, you have that orange ring, so if you shoot, the ghost will go back. But if the game decides that you didn't press the button fast enough, or the game decides, you know, the ghost got you or whatever, like, sucks to be you. They take a big chunk out of your health, oftentimes, like, half your health, which is kind of a problem as well, you know, when there's limited healing items and stuff. Um... And so, the thing becomes that, like, there's also this dodging mechanic to that when they're in the orange or whatever and they're really close to you, there's also some way to dodge? I don't know if it's just a timing thing or you just have to get lucky. I, that's what it felt like to me. You just get lucky and you dodge their attack entirely. Um, I don't know. If that had been refined a little bit better, that could have been a really cool mechanic. You know, do I shoot them or do I dodge them? But that's not how it kind of works. It just uh, is not very well implemented, you know? So often these 
long ass boss fights um and and really they're, they're not too long but they're long in the sense that they take a lot of hits and you're going to be dying and doing it over and over and over again and if you don't have save states you're going to be walking all the way back and stuff which is even worse but uh often that's the main problem of the game well, so no problem, right? Bosses are few and far between. Maybe there's one per chapter. No, like, in the final two chapters, most encounters are boss fights, and it sucks. Because it's like, yeah, this is cool, but I am drained of my resources here. I don't have very many healing items. It does make the bosses feel scary sometimes, but it really just becomes more frustrating because they have these projectile things or there's this one guy who you fight twice who's got this giant sword and, and he'll sneak up on you and, and he's, he's got this huge range uh to get you from and it, it just you're not equipped to handle this it feels unfair it, rather than some of the other bosses encounters feel scary because it is fair enough like you can sort of uh play around and dodge stuff and that'll be fine and you'll be fine as long as you you know do all right but the game's not meant for you to be taking on these encounters the final two chapters is is mostly bosses it, it, it's like you know enemy after enemy after enemy after enemy and you just keep going and and your next objective is where you need to go as an enemy uh, in the first few chapters there's more of a balance and i think that's uh, a lot nicer there's a lot of puzzles and enemies so you're walking around the house there's a lot of exploration as well of the house um once you kind of get through the first like two or three chapters you've seen all of the house I, I would say the first two chapters you've seen like almost all of the house um yeah outside of like the final area which is like hidden in the house or whatever and and, you, and that you only get to in, in five you know there's little areas you haven't seen but you've seen ma basically the main layout of the house and you kind of get the idea there so it's like there's less exploration later on, and it's more just about the fights then, and it's just not as well balanced um, in those later parts of the game. Uh, that being said, that's the biggest negative right there, is the dodging and the, the lack of balancing there. Um, other than that, though, the game is, is very atmospheric, and uh, in terms of horror... You never know when there's going to be a ghost around the corner and stuff. And, and all of that works super great. Um, even the puzzles are pretty clever. Uh, there's like only one two or thing, one or two things you got to like kind of realize about the puzzles before you go in. The, the, there's like a Japanese like clock thing that like... They, they, they do this puzzle a lot where um, the numbers go backwards. So it starts at zero and then it goes one, two... Three, and it's actually would be this way uh, from what you guys are seeing but for me it's you know counterclockwise um, you know for you uh, this is how our clock goes and for me I mean for you know and then that's how their clock goes so there's zero one two three four five and so figuring that out and go you know going uh no <laughs> this wait this way going this way around it's just kind of a tricky system and then then on top of that you have to know the combination so each night has their own combination for a few different doors and so just figuring that out through uh the, the game does tell you this stuff but like figuring that out is just kind of tricky too so another thing that can be kind of mitigated for, for a guide but yeah a lot of little puzzles like that are pretty cool um it's just like if you don't really know those characters you wouldn't know that's one two three and you would be thinking it's zero like you wouldn't even think it's zero you'd think of 12 so you'd think it's like 12 one two three and you, you know going this way because that's how we do ours but theirs are going this way so it's weird you know it's stuff like that you just kind of have to know and, and when I figured that out, I'm like, oh, okay. I guess that's, that's kind of strange. It's a little strange thing. But I do like the puzzles. I like that that adds a nice balance to the gameplay. And finding the resources throughout the house, it feels very Resident Evil-esque. So it's like Resident Evil with a supernatural angle to it. Um, 
where there's a first person cheer camera sort of system that you can upgrade and all of that. All of that is great, and you can technically move while you're doing the camera stuff, but you move so slow. If you could move faster or if you could dodge better, I think the game would be, like, pretty much a perfect horror game. Without that, the game is still really good, and, and I still very much recommend it as a horror game, because it's still really uh, atmospheric, and, you know, you turn out all the lights, it's just you, oh my god, it's kind of, it's, it's freaky, you know, it's, it's, man, if you weren't scared of ghosts before, you know, like, but the later parts of it are less, this is scary, and more, this is kind of unfair. And they actually start adding, like, one or two ghosts later on, which is kind of a problem, because the other ghosts, there's, like, a narrow room, um, actually, every time this one or two ghosts, the two ghosts thing happens, it's always a narrow room that you don't have anywhere to, like, go to, uh, that they can't get you. So there's one in, like, this water room, where there's just, like, these boards that you can kind of wiggle through, but there's two ghosts, one is a little girl, and this other bigger girl and she only kind of shows herself sometimes so it's like oh it's, it's frustrating um to do that one and there's one at the end where there's like this straight uh path and there's these two ghosts and then the one ghost is here and then the other ghost is like off to the side and the other ghost always comes to the side from the side to ambush you and you there's not really it, it never really shows up until you like like unless you get lucky and it's just kind of in the path with the other one and then you can like take a picture of both of them it, that kind of stuff gets kind of tricky. It it was good. It just felt unrefined and it felt unfair sometimes too. But when when it's just you and one ghost and you're just trying to navigate, that's usually where the game uh, shines a little bit better. But they had to try the whole two ghost thing too. I think uh, that just makes it a lot more challenging. Is 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 the idea and sometimes unfair. Because of the dodging system. And if that was better, I think the two ghost thing could work. And, and if they weren't so cheap sometimes where they like ambush you from the side and, and it's such a small path kind of thing. So, so just some balancing there would have helped a lot. Um, is that it? Is that the whole soundtrack? Oh, okay. No, this is just a really quiet track. Um, so yeah, overall, like I really enjoyed the game. I, I know I've complained a lot about, a lot about the balancing and the... the um, the dodging system but that that was like the really the main complaint with the game the rest of the game is really good the atmosphere is really good the music uh and the sound design like really knocks it out of the park um like the mansion design is pretty cool and like the layout is pretty good to where you know there's lots of shortcuts and stuff to like let you get wherever you need to be and stuff and there's there's lots of little optional things and little secrets around that kind of stuff that kind of stuff is cool, you know, discovering all of that is cool, and just kind of figuring the whole game out is pretty cool. Um, but there are times where it's cryptic, and uh, times where there's stuff like the Japanese characters that you wouldn't know as an American player. You know, to a Japanese player, okay, this stuff's common knowledge, but uh, the game doesn't really tell you these things, so you kind of have to just kind of figure that out. So... Overall, though, those flaws don't really carry the game down too much outside of that uh, unbalancing of the boss fights at the very end where like every encounter is just these super hard fights like there's there's one part where you fight this guy on, on the fourth day you fight the, the fourth part or whatever you fight this guy and then then you have to go fight four other uh, headless ghosts and these headless ghosts you can't get, shoot their head because they're headless and so the head only comes in sometimes and it usually only comes in when they're close to you it, it's just a big pain to like fight them and they're all in these different locations um, which is fine, but it's just like it feels like there's a lot of boss and and not as if it was balanced better, it would have been like I said, fine. But yeah, so that's the one thing that I would have uh, worked on a little more kind of thing. So, but the upgrade system is cool. The camera stuff that that all works pretty good. Um. Like the story and the character stuff that kind of fills out the world and how fucked up it is and whatnot and uh, all these ghosts and whatnot and it it feels <laughs> I don't want to say realistic but it feels more grounded in reality of something where there would be ghosts or whatever it's not like I don't know the ghosts um 
how do I describe it? It's like some games have ghosts, like let's say like Ghostbusters or something. Like it's not like that, you know, where it's like some action game with ghosts. It's a horror game, so it really has that nice atmosphere. The ghosts feel more realistic in a way. I don't, I don't know. I know ghosts are well. I, I think there sort of has to be some kind of ghost or something. Ghosts aren't like real in the sense that they are in this game, but. It feels like a very real. It it got me invested in the uh, what is that like the um. You know, it made my mind believe like, oh yeah, this this could happen like, uh, suspension of disbelief or whatever. You know, like yeah yeah I get this like this makes sense. You know, like it it, it feels right. Like it feels like what could happen. You know, like it doesn't feel silly most of the time. You know, like uh. And so your the immersion is very good in that sense uh which i really enjoy the only time the immersion breaks is <laughs> again when it feels unfair you know and that's that's when you're just like you start getting frustrated um and i don't get frustrated i you know i say this all the time but i don't get frustrated at games often but like some of the fights in this game were just so frustrating because it's like how in the hell are you supposed to have a chance at this um and some of them you can just barely do if you don't have good ammo um, if you're like me and you're an idiot and you waste all your ammo. So it's, it's just kind of, um, something to think about. Like, don't waste your good ammo on the regular enemies is another thing. Save it for the bosses. Yeah. But, um, overall, I really liked Fatal Frame. I think, um, hopefully some of these flaws would be improved upon in the sequels and I'll definitely uh, be getting to those at some point here uh, not anytime soon maybe next Halloween or something um, but it's a series I'm looking forward to getting into now because it's, it's interesting and I and I do enjoy it and, and it was good so uh, highly recommended just uh, keep some of those things I said in mind and, and that'll do you well. So uh, I'm going to give the game a 9.5 out of 10. And uh, yeah, until next time, this has been Jay-Z NES saying keep it classic. Stick around for more reviews, underrated games, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Jay-Z, out.